Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome back to the series that Sky Switch has started. Oh, I can't believe it, but we're going on well past a year and a half now of regular webinars that are all about you. I'm Andy Abramson. I'm with Sky Switch. I love hosting these webinars every few weeks because you, our resellers, are so important to us as you're not customers, you're part of a family, and we're really happy that you're here. I love doing these because I learn so much and we hope you learn so much too because these webinars are an important part of how you can sell more, make more money, and most importantly, be far more educated about what's going on in the SkySwitch universe with our many ecosystem players that we have. And today we're really fortunate to have two, three, four people who are so well informed about what's going on with Grandstream and SkySwitch and how it all ties together for you. This is not about SkySwitch as much as about what SkySwitch and Grandstream can do for you so you can make more money, be more informed, and provide better service to your customers. And let's face it, we are all in the service economy. We're coming back from a three-day weekend. We know it's a busy day. We know you're going to combine Monday and Tuesday into today on a Tuesday. You may not be listening in real time, so that doesn't matter to you. But if you're live, if you're with us, we are so happy you're here. What we're going to talk about today with our fr friends from Glanstream and also with our good friend Fareed, who you many know because of his great support services that he provides as part of Corey's team and SkySwitch, is we're all going to talk about cloud provisioning and management with SkySwitch and Grandstream. Now, more businesses are working remotely. I don't think that's anything new to you. We've been through it with the pandemic. But the one thing that is happening is the demand for cloud provisioning is happening at the all-time high. We all want auto provisioning to work right. And SkySwitch's process for resellers is designed to be about as stress-free as possible. And now with Grandstream's zero-touch cloud provisioning and management system, resellers like you have access to a really easy-to-use, enterprise-grade, centralized interface that allows you to manage all your Grandstream products before the sale, during, and after deployment. That's right. You can do things before, during, and after deployment. Real important because this allows you to pick, pack, ship, deliver, and never touch the product. You can go do that right through the SkySwitch Dash Manager and the SkySwitch Store. Now, today we're going to learn all about the many reasons you really need to be utilizing cloud provisioning. It's so easy to implement because of the way Grandstream and SkySwitch have put everything together. So today we're joined by Phil Bowers, my good friend who runs marketing over at Grandstream. I've gotten to know Phil over the last year and a half since Vectors. Great guy, very helpful, Johnny on the spot, loves to communicate with people on a regular basis. He's going to introduce the rest of the Grandstream team. And of course, we're joined by the one and only superstar of our superstar team of people inside SkySwitch, Fareed. You all know Fareed. If you don't know Fareed, get to know Fareed. He is a rock star. He makes things work, and he has a great relationship with the Grandstream folks. That's why we brought him along as well. So with that, let me turn it over to Phil for a quick introduction, and then I'll talk about what we're going to be covering. Thanks, Andy, and good morning to everyone. Hope everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend, and you know, thanks for uh, kicking off your week here with us today. So as Andy mentioned, my name is Phil Bowers. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Grandstream. Been with Grandstream for actually over 10 years now. Uh, in addition to marketing, I also work very closely with the, the North America channel, uh, our service provider partners, and our distribution partners within North America. Um, so again, really, really excited to be here. Uh, great topic today, something that has been, you know, really one of our biggest requests and biggest topics that, you know, has been flying through our shop over the last couple of months. So again, excited to be here. Want to introduce the rest of our team. We also have Danny Lynn, our senior technical lead for North America. Danny, how are you this morning? 
Hi, everybody. Doing well here. Thank you, Phil. Um, uh, just real quick, my name is Danny Lin. Uh, I handle most of the technical support for um, the North America team here at Grandstream. Just been at Grandstream for uh, just over eight years now. So uh, most of my priorities are focused on partners just like SkySwitch, as well as many other ITSPs and priority customers as well. And awesome. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Ryan. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Phil. Uh, as the team mentioned, Ryan Frisella, Business Development Manager for ITSPs here in North America. Also work with the platforms uh, with Danny and team and have been with the team for almost a year now, located in Rhode Island. Really excited to be working with SkySwitch and for joining the team today. Thank you. Phil, it looks like the, Sky, the, the Grandstream team has grown a lot. Not only is um, Rachel working in Hugh, now by coastal because Rachel moved to Boston and Hugh's still out on the West Coast, but you've gone deeper. It's great to have Danny and Ryan on. Ryan's the newcomer to the team. We, we've been talking with Ryan on some of our monthly updates. It's great that you're all there, and we really appreciate the Grandstream relationship at SkySwitch. So on behalf of the entire SkySwitch team, from Frank and Jason and Corey and Blake, we want to say thank you for really being a part of our team. I remember when you came to us just before Vectors in 2019 saying we really want to be a part of your community, and you have. We did our Try and Buy program last year that went so well. We should be talking about more of that this year because the market opportunity is before you and it's before us. Today on the webinar, we're going to talk about the growing demand for cloud and remote provisioning options as a result of businesses becoming obviously more mobile, more remote, and the need for flexibility. We're going to do an overview of the Grandstream device management system known as GDMS and how it is used to set up, provision, and manage Grandstream devices, including the GRP series, which is very popular and growing. There's also going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to create and use the GDMS system to provision and manage devices on the SkySwitch platform remotely through the cloud. And what's great about GDMS, everybody, is it's totally cloud-based. You can do it from your laptop, your desktop, a tablet, a phone. It's that simple. And then also we're going to hear and see everything that's new in the Grandstream product portfolio. So we've already talked a little about who's presenting. Everybody knows who I am. I'm Andy Abramson. I've been working with SkySwitch now since, what, June of 2019? So I guess I'm having my second anniversary. Erica, I did not get a card. I did not get a cake, but that's okay. Um, we've already, we're going to have a great time with Phil and Fareed and everybody else. So let's dive right into how things work. Phil, take it away and start telling us all about how GDMS and Grandstream is changing the way business operates. Yeah, certainly. And so definitely before I get started, also, you know, anyone here on the panel, feel free to interrupt and, you know, throw in anything at any point in time. Um, but, you know, as, as to kind of get us going here, as, as Andy mentioned earlier, their businesses are now more dispersed than ever before. And I think that, you know, obviously, without a doubt, that was largely accelerated by COVID. I would say that my take on this is that the market was going to get to this point eventually. Maybe COVID accelerated it by five years or so. But now we're at the point where the majority of businesses here in the US have at least two different physical locations. And now you're adding in remote workers, you're adding in hybrid workers, you're adding in now that everything's opening back up and people are traveling. Um, you know, all of the, there is basically, there is, uh, businesses have their employees and their staff spread out all over the place and they need a centralized cloud-based interface to be able to manage all of that um, and it's you know not just important in terms of the the functionality of the the devices the you know the phones that workers might be using from home or within the office or within your you know third or fourth office but it's also super important for the security of your network as well you know when you are giving out when a business is giving out access to its network outside of its you know local network um, you need the ability to be able to track and monitor and manage what's going on with those connections and that really is exactly what uh, cloud provisioning and management offers you know, in addition to that, it also is allowing you as service providers, and, and I think we'll probably touch on this later on, to 
provide better customer service or, you know, yeah, to provide a better customer experience to, as Andy mentioned, to deploy devices without ever having to touch them to ensure that when customers get them on their premise, all they have to do is be plugged in and they're ready to go. It makes the, you know, the installation and the deployment process so much quicker and easier, uh, allows customers to get going right up uh, as soon as they get the devices. And again, for you as a service provider, just makes your life so much easier. Um, you know, we'll talk as we go through today about some of these things also, but you know, this platform, our platform that we're going to tell you about here in a moment, gives you the ability to not only deploy those devices, but then to give your customers access to the portal to be able to then allow them to pick it up and manage from there. So, um, you know, again, really with businesses being so much more dispersed than ever before, um, you know, especially we, we've got, we're seeing people flock out of cities here in the United States. I personally did it myself. Um, you know, I know that our, just our, our own Grandstream team, we were in pretty much two different offices a year and a half ago. And now I feel like we're in about 10 or 12 states just between our North America team. Um, and, and it really is super important that the devices or what everyone's doing is able to be managed and seen from one centralized interface. Um, because as we're saying, we expect this mobility, this uh, dispersed, that's the wrong word, this mobility is going to continue to expand without a doubt. Um, and, and here, as we're talking about provisioning, it really just changes what IT needs and what a business needs from the technology side to be able to kind of make all of this work for them. Phil, this is really important because the, the whole thing is it, about business operations, flexibility, mobility. What are you seeing in the, in, in the demand side from customers when it comes to the changing workplace? Absolutely. And, and I, I think that I'd love to also hear from from the rest of our team. Ryan, I think might have a have a point on this, but I mean, we really are all of a sudden everybody's asking for a cloud provisioning. Everybody in like across the entire channel, pretty much. Um, whereas before, I mean, a year and a half ago, this was it was almost a nice kind of thing to have that people I think would, didn't truly understand why they needed it or how it fit in with their business. And I would say that nowadays in, you know, the, in 2021, this is a requirement. Cloud provisioning is a requirement. A lot of businesses, a lot of our channel partners are realizing that. Um, and the majority of the deployments and the projects that come through us now, without a doubt, require a cloud provisioning and management platform. Yeah, um, thank you, Phil Ryan here. I'd certainly agree, especially with the nice to have uh, view of cloud provisioning prior to COVID. We've really seen, as you mentioned, the acceleration in the transformation where as uh, different businesses, customers, partners are looking for different options for capabilities. Well, if uh, there's gonna be an accelerated transformation back into the office, or into these new workplaces, we're going to uh, really need to see these, the remote provisioning in action as uh, we've been seeing these past few months. I think the stat that I saw from Entrepreneur Magazine, I believe that's where it was from recently, is that 70% of businesses plan to, uh, now after COVID is opening, to basically have a large amount of their employees remain remote or have remote workers. And this is a requirement to really be able to make that work, both I think on the service provider end and on the, on the business end. So yeah, in terms of, um, I think we touched on most of this again, but again, just all with, it, with the current landscape right now, um, with businesses being more dispersed than we ever, than we mentioned, um, you need one centralized interface to manage these devices, regardless of location. You know, we have partners, um, excuse me, um, who are deploying devices all over the world, frankly, 
Um, and this is, you know, required for that. It, it, as I mentioned earlier, adds that network security monitor as well, um, where you're not just ensuring that the devices that uh, a business's employees have. And, you know, we certainly, the other thing I should add into this is we certainly understand that for a service provider, you know, one of the most critical elements of your service is the phone. That's one of the main things that, um, you know, the customers interface with. So this type of platform not only makes sure that you are giving them the best service all the time, and that, um, but also that their network is secure. I mentioned it earlier, that extra kind of monitor, making sure, especially any connections from outside the network to, um, you know, are secure. Um, ensure seamless operation, again, just ensures that from deployment to uh, set up to actually the use of the device is, is as uh, seamless as it gets. Where again, and, and we'll talk about this in a moment where you have the ability with a, a cloud platform to have all of those devices you know, provisioned, sent out directly to the customer. And then uh, if you choose to do so, you can give the customer the ability to then kind of pick it up and monitor it from there. Uh, with the same platform, granular access, obviously. So again, the whole thing is, is from the business side, it provides a better service. It ensures the service is always working and it gives them the tools to be able to ensure that regardless of location. And then from the service provider side, it just allows you to deploy devices quicker to ensure that those devices and your network is operating as, uh, as, you know, as, as good as possible, frankly. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think we can probably move into the GDMS portion, go more specifically into that at this point, unless there's anything else that we wanted to talk about before we go into that. On GDMS, I think it's real important that when you talk about the grand stream device management system, that you, as you take people through the various steps that how it works and why it's so reliable and why it's so dependable. I think one of the key factors here is when someone migrates, when a reseller migrates a customer over from a prior reseller or from a prior service provider, how Grandstream can basically make those devices like new again and what those steps are. And what that's so important because a lot of our resellers win customers over from other service providers, telephony companies, other resellers, or do it yourself. And these people bought their phones and they're sort of locked, just like a cell phone. If you buy it from AT&T or Verizon, they lock it. Well, a lot of times the devices are locked, but can be unlocked and migrated over. So that's, a, can, you, can you or Danny talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's an important point and not really defined in the slides, Phil, that is key to the customer staying on Grandstream. Sure. I'm going to turn that over to Danny. Sure thing. So um, there are a couple of ways, as you mentioned, um, that devices can be locked to a certain service provider or to a previous service provider. So um, in one way, if it were to be locked to a prior service provider, depending on how they've configured the phone, they're may not be a way to fully unlock those depending on how deep they went into locking it um, but if it's you know just a rudimentary uh, redirection or anything like that that just changes where the phones reach out or where the phones phone home then we can easily revert those changes and then we can just take those phones and provision them on on the uh, the newer uh, newer provisioning server so there's a it's there's a little little caveats here and there, but um, it can be done most of the time. Okay, and they can do that through the GDMS system. Obviously, it doesn't require a call to Fareed or to your team. You just log in, let it go to the GDMS, let GDMS do its magic, right? Well, unfortunately, it kind of goes back to the, the little caveats that we have here, um, depending on if they've used GDMS in the past to sort of lock down their system or whether it's a different system that they use to revision. Um, for those who, who may be familiar with our, our older system gaps, if they're using that to redirect, we would need to effectively remove those out of play. 
Um, and if they were provisioned on GDMS, we would need to remove that out of play um, so that they can be added into the new account. So um, unfortunately, depending on how the previous device was configured, there might need to be some sort of interaction be between either SkySwitch or with GrantStream. Okay. So Phil, why don't you dive into the process? Because the process is so simple. I think as everybody hears what you have to say as you take them through the eight or nine steps, they're going to see that it's just die gone easy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really how we we designed it to be. And to be completely honest, this entire platform was designed initially specifically for service providers. This was all part of an effort that we made three or four years ago, really to kind of re- um, what's the right word, to reprioritize ourselves to really build a solution that is ideal for service providers. And GDMS was real, is really the anchor of it. Um, so just to you know, touch on it, just the basics of it real fast before we begin to dive on, into it. As we talked about earlier, it's a full uh, provisioning and management platform. So it's for before your deployments, during the deployments, and after the deployments. It's going to give you everything from zero, true zero touch provisioning, like we keep talking about. Devices provisioned uh, in the cloud before they go out, get to the customer, <clears throat> plug them in, automatically set up. True centralized device management, real time monitoring and alerts from the system when things occur, when alarms that you might set occur. Uh, some really great intelligent troubleshooting and diagnostic tools built into it, variety of reports and alerts. Um, but in terms of the, the you know, more specific stuff on it here, it runs on Amazon Web Services. So again, it is fully cloud-based. You're going to get that 99.9, you know, 59% reliability with Amazon Web Services. Um, it's also, you know, one of the great things to point out about it is it's free and there's there's no limits. We do not, we do not have any limits on the amount of um, SIP accounts or devices that you can manage with GDMS. Again, there's no limit on the low end or no limit on the high end and it's fully free and we have no plans to change that. Um, and in addition to that, in terms of thinking about how you might utilize this, we have a couple of different options that we're able to offer. Um, and maybe Danny can go into this more in, in a subsequent slide, but we are able to offer you an API for our GDMS that you can integrate directly with your platform, or you can redirect to GDMS, which from my experience, I think is, is the more, um, more common route. Um, but go to gdms.cloud, sign up for a free account, start using it literally right now. Um, I think we pretty much talked about most of this. This is again, more general stuff about kind of what it provides for you as a service provider. We talked about the customer experience, flexible integration. That's what I just talked about in that it can be either an API um, for GDMS that you can plug in with your platform um, or you can redirect to ours. And maybe actually now since we're talking about it, maybe um, if there's more details that need to be provided on that or uh, an explanation, Danny can go into that on the, the different, you know, the API and the redirect options. Danny, you want to talk about that? Sorry about that. It was on mute. Um, so yeah, the uh, the redirect is pretty simple to do on GDMS. Um, I mentioned briefly before about Gaps. Gaps was previously just the redirection service where you um, just entered a URL and it would phone phone home and grab the configuration. Um, a lot of people ask whether that's uh, possible on GDMS as well, and the simple answer is yes. Um, very simple process, very similar to what people are used to on the, the old GAPS versioning service. Um, as far as API goes, uh, anything you can do on the web interface on GDMS, you can pretty much do on uh, using the API, which uh, if, if for those uh, en enterprises or for those service providers who have maybe their own in-house software developer, um, they can create uh, API integrations with our GDMS, which kind of just automates the whole process of taking this set of devices, using this template, and, or or maybe using this uh, redirection server instead. Um, and, and a lot of that stuff is automated uh, so that you never really have to log into the web portal of GDMS and everything is just handled on the back end. Um, of course, this does require a slightly more um, upfront time cost uh, to develop that that integration, but you know, usually, from what we've heard in the past, uh, once you get that going, it's just kind of kind of snowballs, and 
uh, there's a lot of hands off, hands off from that point. Um, uh, just to add to uh, uh, Danny's point, um, there is no, <clears throat> uh, our resellers don't have to do that. Actually, we it, it's part of our plans to uh, integrate it directly from the store, you know, as much as possible through the API. So we will do the work for them. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. So yeah, I guess to finish this slide up and then we'll actually dive into uh, the specific steps that Andy mentioned. Um, in terms of scalability, just mentioned it, no limit on devices or accounts. The other thing to touch on with scalability is that we do, with GDMS, you can provide granular access to uh, customers so that they would be able to have the ability to use their own version of GDMS to manage and, and see just their own devices on their account um, or their service plan. Easy management, uh, one of, I guess the thing to touch on there is we have a variety, I'm sure this will come up at some point in time, of configuration templates available within GDMS, just kind of stock templates for our devices that you can use by model or by group to make that just a quick and easy process. Um, also within one of the things we haven't touched on today about GDMS in terms of management is it gives you the ability to automate tasks. So you can automate firmware updates, resets, or reboots. Um, system refreshes, all that kind of stuff can, can fully be automated within uh, GDMS. And then again, on se secure and seamless network operations, uh, does also have, as I think I touched earlier, real-time monitoring tools built into it. Uh, and then a variety of actually uh, smart diagnostic tools um, that you can enable the device, or excuse me, the system to, to basically help it fix itself. And it also features a variety of different uh, encrypted or encryptions for provisioning through GDMS. All right, so now we will, this slide shows you just kind of real quickly and real briefly how to get a device added to GDMS. Um, and was wondering, hoping that Danny uh, afford this slide, could just kind of give us a quick overview of just, you know, from adding a device to GDMS to having it ready to go, what are, what are the steps? Gotcha. So um, I think Free mentioned uh, a little bit that they sort of handle that aspect of getting devices moved onto a customer's account. Um, but if we weren't talking about that, that aspect being in there, um, adding a device onto GDMS is relatively simple, um, just involves having the MAC address and the serial number of the device, which um, I, I'm not sure if, if anyone could provide the answer, whether uh, SkySwitch provides that information to when a purchase is made. But let's just assume that it, that it, uh, that they do. Um, essentially, what you would just do is go under the uh, the interface in GDMS there and just type in those numbers. Um, of course, there are simpler ways to do that. There is a spreadsheet that you can just simply fill out with the uh, the respective serials and, and MAC addresses and just upload that back into GDMS, and it would just automatically populate all those devices into the account. Um, Adding SIP accounts to the device is uh, uh, relatively simple as well. Um, essentially, you would just uh, establish a SIP server, which just would point to SkySwitch in this case, and then the, uh, the VoIP accounts that uh, you're allowed to use to register devices to. So it's really just entering all the info first and then just assigning which devices can use that specific profile. Um, as far as device parameters go, uh, anybody who's um, familiar with Grandstream uh, provisioning a little bit is um, might know a little bit about p-values and all that stuff. Uh, for the majority of the device, you don't need to mess with any of that stuff. We have uh, uh, basic templates just built out, which includes very uh, mostly popular parameters that you would find on the device. And it, it's really just picking what you want the phone to, uh, to be provisioned as and, and what parameters to use. Um, for anything that might not be listed in the, the rudimentary uh, profile, you can obviously add that separately. Um, so essentially, the entire phone is provisionable, even if you might not see specific parameters listed. Uh, and, and lastly, the automated task, we can talk about things like firmware upgrades and, and uh, having the phone's uh, refetch um, profiles or, or refetch parameters to kind of update the changes that maybe the administrator has made down the line. But um, this, the automated task is more useful for things like maybe firmware upgrade, 
um, or maybe uh, nightly reboots for for um, for some reason if if the administrator chooses to reboot the phones every every week or every other day or something like that. But um, really great for for checking for um, latest firmwares and and stuff like that. Awesome. So yeah, this was what this slide shows is pretty much I guess we can say the more manual setup with GDMS. And then I'm going to move over to here another slide, which maybe we should have covered this one first. Uh, but this one's more specifically on using GDMS and the kind of the service provider steps to using GDMS to get devices deployed and, and set up for your customer. Um, and as you can see, it's a pretty quick and easy process. Uh, I'm gonna actually, I'll go through it real fast, but was also Danny, if you don't mind giving us a little bit more of an explanation on this one as well. But as you can see, it's pretty much the product gets shipped to the customer. Um, the customer would plug in the device. I think another step before number one there would just be that it was added to GDMS. Um, then you have the ability, as we talked about earlier, to have, uh, in this case, GDMS would redirect to the sky switch platform, which would grab the provisioning template and it's ready to go. Hopefully I explained that right, but maybe Danny can give us a little bit more of an explanation. Yeah, I think you you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, so uh, as you mentioned, the very first step would make sure that the devices are added into some GDMS account. Um, and then as soon as the product is shipped to the customer, the customer plugs it in and uh, the GDMS pushes whatever template that was assigned to those subset of MAC addresses um, at that point. And usually it's it's just a process of maybe like a minute or so um, until the phones eventually reboot if necessary, uh, or, or might be just fully good to go depending on what parameters were changed by default. But uh, it's, it's really just, um, as you mentioned, the, the steps that's listed on screen. Cool, cool. Yeah, super quick, super easy. Um, and then, as I think I mentioned a couple of times, and, and Danny, correct me if I'm wrong on this, you can, the, from the service provider standpoint, could then also provide granular GDMS access to a, a customer to be able to manage and just see their own devices, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, there, there's a huge uh, subset of, depending on how SkySwitch wants to um, perform their account management, whether they want to give um, you know, a subset of their users access to, um, you know, or give their, their own login to, into SkySwitch's own portal, which then has sub organizations or sub sites, uh, created under there, or whether they want to, um, just have the customer create their own account and manage their own stuff. Um, but, but merely just, uh, handle the initial redirection portion. Um, there's a lot of uh, granularity and a lot of flexibility depending on you know how they want to kind of manage the uh, the customer or the customer infrastructure. Guys, the, the big thing with GDMS though is flexibility and reliability and availability. It's Absolutely. always there for the reseller to access, and it could be made from what Danny just said available for the customer to access, which reduces friction. And actually, from a reseller perspective, if you're giving your customer access to the GDMS platform, that's one less thing you have to do, and that allows for greater self-management by the customer. On the other hand, if you're keeping the service capability within your organization as a reseller, this is one way of staying ahead of your customers and knowing what's going on and being able to update their devices for them without them even having to know it. So there's a lot of benefits to using GDMS, and we're really thankful that Grandstream has brought this even made it even better than it was two years ago. Couldn't have summed it up any better than you just did. I'm just here to make you look good, Phil. <laughs> That's why I keep coming back, Andy. So let's keep moving because this is, you know, and by the way, resellers are listening in. Why don't you post questions in the Q&A if you have any? We've got a good group on and we've got the smartest people in the universe and the plus our super Farida sitting on the bench right now waiting to jump in and talk about things about how you and Sky Switch interact with GDMS. So let's not keep Farida on the bench. Let's get him in the game. Let's talk about the new products, though, because this is really, really, really exciting. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
so touch on the uh, rest of the webinar. We'll give you an update on, I guess it's three product types that we've released over the last couple of months, uh, basically since I guess the December of last year. I think clearly, especially with the topic today, the, the phone that you see or the series of phones that you see here in the picture is probably the most relevant and the most popular uh, with this audience. And that is our, uh, the new addition, I should say, uh, to our very popular GRP series of carrier grade IP phones. We are calling these our GRP essential series. These are essentially, I just used the word essentially there twice, sorry about that. Um, these are basic devices. You have our, our more, the current GRPs that you all probably know and love, the GRP 2612 through 2616. Those are more, we're gonna call them like professional series devices uh, made for people that handle medium to high call volumes. These guys right here, the GRP Essential Series are basic devices, more for occasional needs. They're super cost effective, uh, allowing you to maximize your budget uh, for these types of devices, which is, you know, as, as I'm sure everybody who knows Grandstream knows, that is one of the things we try to do with everything we build is, is really build it to offer that you know, superior price point. Um, but these guys are, you know, really can carries on the legacy of the other GRP carrier ser or carrier grade models. Brand, you know, as you can see from it, sleek look and feel to it, reimagined user interface from the, the devices that we, you know, previously had our previous generation four or five years ago. Uh, there are four different models within this series, um, as you'll see on the next screen, actually. Yeah, I'm just going to go over to this one first. Uh, so there are four different models in this series. Um, they are, uh, as you can see there, GRP 2601, 02, 03, and 04. Uh, all of these models are going to give you anywhere between two to six SIP accounts and four lines. They're all going to give you, uh, at least compared to the, uh, the higher end GRP series, these devices are going to give you a little bit smaller monochrome screens. The 2601 is not backlit, but the other models here are all backlit. Um, you're also gonna have gigabit and PoE available. And that's one of the ways that we make this series. And we've done this with previous, we'll call them more basic series of IP phones in the past, is you'll see for each model, like for the 2601, ex for example, there's a 2601 and a 2601P. The P model or anything you see here that has a P on it, that's gonna have power over ethernet. So basically all of these models have um, an option with, with and without power over ethernet. And that just gives you a lot of different price flexibility in terms of you know, what your budget is and what your network is, if you're gonna utilize POE or not for these. Uh, just you know, allows a lot of price flexibility with these devices. You also see there is one Wi-Fi capable model here. So if you're looking for more basic models to kind of get your feet wet within the VoIP over Wi-Fi, the 2602W is a great option, has built-in dual band Wi-Fi. Um, sure, many of you know that <clears throat> a good amount of our, the uh, GRP 2612 through 2616, I believe it's the 12 and then the 14, 15, 16 all have built-in uh, Wi-Fi. So what are these devices for, or, or who are they for rather? Again, more basic and occasional needs, those that handle low to moderate call volumes or any business really that's you know, kind of just looking for, for more, more along the lines of phones on a budget. A um, couple other more specific places where we've had uh, a lot of success within this kind of more basic series of IP phones and Actually, to go back a couple of generations, historically, these more basic IP phones have actually been one of our uh, best-selling device or series. We previously had our GXP and still do GXP 1600 series. Say that this is kind of the the newer generation of that. Um, but hotel rooms. So most countries require have laws in place. <clears throat> obviously, the U.S. that requires hotel rooms to have phones in them, so guests can call out. Hotels aren't looking to put in, you know, expensive phones or whatnot. They're looking for more basic devices like these. So we've had a lot of success in these uh, with hotel rooms. 
Classrooms, same thing. They all are going to need to have the ability to make and receive calls. They don't need a whole ton of lines though. It's generally one or two. So these are great classroom phones. Also consultation rooms. And there I'm talking more about the medical field. You go to you know any hospital or any medical facility, dentist office, whatnot. Every room has a phone in it. Again, just to be able to make and receive calls. Um, and these are great options for that. So more, um, again, more along the lines of uh, devices for basic or occasional users. Anyone that doesn't need to handle a whole ton of calls, these are great for, as I mentioned, great price flexibility and great price point on these devices. And for those of you that may have experience with our GXP 1600 series in the past, we have greatly improved the performance of these GRP 26OX series versus that 1600 series, two times faster boot up um, on these devices because of the CPU that they have. Um, yeah, I think that's anything. Yeah, I think that's pretty much, that is the, uh, again, the new GRP Essential Series. Uh, this is the new, we'll call it half of the GRP uh, portfolio. Those are our carrier grade IP phones. Uh, so to add to the models we came out with just about a year and a half ago, we now have, and again, these came out in December. So they have been out for about six months now. Um, these are the more basic or low end, we'll call it, of the GRP series. But definitely a really good topic to mention here as we're talking about cloud and device provisioning and management. These IP phones are right down that alley. Now, Phil, let's talk about availability. All of these are available right now through the distributors like NTS yeah. and others. Great, great, great question. That is obviously, you know, I think everybody's pretty much aware of, you know, supply chain issues and whatnot going on. The reason these devices are fully available, they're fully available from all of our distributors. We're not experiencing any supply chain issues with these devices whatsoever. So they are fully available. That's a great question. And what about the prior line? Is that still available or are we starting to see spotty availability because simply everyone did a lot of buying last year. Yeah, that's that's a, also another good question. I'm wondering if if Ryan might be able to touch on that in terms of the the 1600s and the, the availability on those. On the GXPs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we, what we have in the channel right now is what we're going to be looking at, and anything that will be coming back in will be minimal in July, in July period. So I, I think we're uh, kind of looking at transitional phases right now, but um, whatever you see out there for those GXPs, that's what we're going to be looking at for the next few months. And then we'll get, we'll get uh, another couple shipments of those in the, the July timeframe. So your GRPs are, are definitely going to be, as I mentioned earlier, these will be in stock. These are going to be fully available moving forward. So definitely, if you weren't utilizing these, I would definitely check these out. As Ryan mentioned, potentially a, a pretty good maybe transitional period here if you were using those 1600s. Got it. Somebody had asked a question earlier, which Ryan answered in the chat. Well, they wanted to know where to find the GDMS service. It's gdms.cloud, for those of you who are wondering. Um, we also have one quick question before we keep going on. Alex Lopez wanted to know if you can tag a VLAN. Danny or Fareed, do you want to take that? Yeah, I, I believe um, it should have uh, been answered. But uh, yes, you can configure VLANs for all the devices um, through GDMS. And pretty much you can do anything that you can do on a phone itself through GDMS. Okay. That's a good point on the VLANs. Yep. Let's keep rolling through. Let's do it. So we got two more products here to cover real fast. Uh, the first one here is our GUV3050 or 3050, whichever you want to say. This is, as some of you hopefully noticed last year, uh, our kind of the biggest addition to our portfolio last year was headsets and webcams. And, you know, though we're obviously talking a lot about phones here, uh, Grant, one of the great things about Grantstream is we make over 90 different products and we really are that kind of one-stop shop and we, we pride ourselves, frankly, on providing everything, every device, every service, or excuse me, every management platform, what every app that you'll need to put in a business communication solution. 
Um, and the latest addition to that are these headsets and webcams. I'm sure it's no secret that, especially last year and continuing on to this year, these are pretty hard to come by out on the market. I know, you know, the biggest manufacturers out there were having and Logitech whatnot, still having uh, supply chain issues and whatnot. Um, so we have our, uh, not only this guy that you see here, I think this is kind of the, the featured model within our headsets because it is the one Bluetooth headset, wireless Bluetooth headset. Uh, does also come with a USB dongle in case uh, you're using a device that might not have Bluetooth. You just plug in the USB dongle and connect it that way. Comes with that uh, stand, charging stand that you see there, has built in active noise cancellation. Um, has, as you can see there, uh, leather ear cups, fully adjustable headband, 12 hour talk time. Um, and again, just like the, the GRPs that we were mentioning earlier, these are fully available through our network of distributors. Um, great price point also offered on the, on the GUV3050. So if you're looking for a wireless Bluetooth headset, uh, definitely recommend uh, our GUV3050. And while we're at it, also take a look at if you're, if you're interested in any USB headsets, we have a couple of those. We're also actually in the process of over the next couple of months, we'll be launching a couple of additional headsets and webcams. So keep an eye out for that. But, cool. Yeah. This is really exciting. And, you know, the, the range of these devices keeps getting further and further and further. Yeah, absolutely. It is, it is pretty impressive how much uh, the technology here has improved. You have, you know, I, I actually have one of these at my desk and I'm able to pretty much walk around the whole floor upstairs here and, and, you know, even in other offices or excuse me, offices in other rooms and whatnot, get a good signal. So yeah, absolutely. The, the impressive, the quality and the uh, length of the range of these guys has gotten very impressive. Well, the next product you're going to talk about has me really excited because I'm all into multimedia conferencing. And when I heard from you, Phil, that this new device was coming out, I'm, I'm like the dog. I'm salivating. I can't wait to get my hands on the one of this in my loft area. It, it would be so cool to have one of these. And then we could probably start doing video because this device looks just so sweet. This is... This is the highest end video conferencing device that we've ever made, without a doubt. Um, it is, as you can see, it supports full, or excuse me, 4K video resolution. And that's really kind of one of the things that we always lead in with this. Um, you know, we've actually, we had one device in the past that did 4K, but over the last couple of years, you now have the, uh, frankly, the majority of TVs anymore are able to actually operate at 4K. So um, anyway, got lost in that. Really what this is made for is, I'm gonna call it, you know, pretty much high-end video conferencing deployments. So boardrooms, conference rooms, training rooms, um, hotel ballrooms, anywhere where you might be wanting to record events, uh, auditoriums, um, college lecture halls, that type of stuff. Um, you know, really anything where you need the full room coverage, where you need that 4K resolution. Uh, it's got an eight megapixel camera built into it. We have a uh, wide angle lens here with 12 times zoom built into it, um, which is a pretty crazy zoom to have built into these types of cameras. But really, again, is what allows it to cover those really large rooms. Uh, has PTZ built into it too. So you do have the ability to, you know, really get as, as flexible or, and as customized as possible with all of your viewing angles and resolutions. Has built in Wi Fi as well, so that you would be able to power this device from Wi Fi, makes it really quick and easy to deploy or set up. Uh, also, can make it a great option for any office where you might have to move it around, for example, or anywhere you, where you might have to move it around. Um, and, you know, as we could do a whole nother webinar on Wi-Fi, but the, you know, the really the, like we were just talking about with Bluetooth, the quality of Wi-Fi now, uh, you're going to get as fast of speeds and generally as good a quality in most places through Wi-Fi as through wired. So really makes the, the Wi-Fi capability there really stand out. Um, also gives you built-in Bluetooth and that gives you the ability to pair Bluetooth speakers and headsets and um, keyboards and whatnot with it. 
One thing this slide doesn't mention that I should mention is it, we, this device actually does come with a device that we call the GMD-1208. It is a, uh, essentially is a uh, mini wireless speaker uh, microphone. So that would give you the ability to, with this device, put one of these in, in a larger room. You can also actually, I believe you can currently connect up to two of those devices to it. So if you do have a larger room and you're worried about audio pickup in the back, you get a couple of these devices. As I mentioned, one comes with them and just kind of spread those out through the room. So this is really, again, designed for high-end video conferencing or room-based video deployments. Um, you know, especially now as obviously we weren't seeing a ton of that over the last year, um, but as offices begin to open up and as, you know, businesses start doing trainings for all the employees that, you know, had to be onboarded in a COVID or in the middle of uh, COVID, for example, or anything along the lines of businesses getting back to those big video environments, this is really the ideal device for it. And just like uh, the other devices we're talking about here today, fully available uh, from our distribution partners right now. Should be no supply chain issues on this guy. Robert Clark had a question, Phil. He wants to know how big of a room will this cover? I think with the remote microphones, it really expands the reach. But with PTZ, what's the range? I'm actually kind of curious if if Danny has an opinion on that. I mean, we've done, I've written a couple of deployment guides for this with the, the one example I keep going back to is actually an employee training center. Uh, it was like a 200 person ballroom, I believe, is the one that, that I use a lot in the deployment example. Um, but I'm curious if, if Danny has anything else on there, anything I'm missing. Uh so with the, uh, if you're utilizing the, the GMD wireless microphones, um, each of those microphones can expand the, um, the voice pickup range by about five meters each. So kind of depending on how the, the room is, is filled out and depending on how much empty space or, or if there's furniture or if it's just the empty ballroom, uh, there's a really a lot of different factors in there, but um, you're looking at uh, at least five meters in, in all directions per microphone. Um, so up to two, so you're adding, I guess, maybe about 10 to 12 meters, uh, depending on how you're cascading them across the room. And that's, I guess we should point out also, that's for being able to pick up audio with those microphones. If, if you don't need to, you know, have people in the audience be able to speak and have somebody on the other end hear them, Frankly, this could even cover even more space than that. With the 12 times Zoom uh, and the PTZ, I mean, the example I'll give you is we used to have uh, not even this guy, but our previous version of this in our Boston office. And we used to be able to Zoom in, it's kind of, kind of funny to say, but we would be able to Zoom in on, on street corners that were 10, 12 blocks away. I'm not even kidding. I used to, I used to zoom into Target from the- Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. When they were building that Target, we used to frankly zoom in on it all the time, but yeah. So if you need the, the mic pickup, uh, it's, I guess what Danny mentioned, if, if you just need to be able to record the video, it's a much larger space. And, and I would say it could cover an entire hotel ballroom. Well, I hope that answers the question. Let's see what else we have in the way of questions. Um, do you have a step-by-step -step guide in the SkySwitch store surrounding GDMS phone configuration? All right, uh, I was, uh, I've been meaning to uh, jump in and, and clear any misunderstanding about that. So uh, there's two things to um, not confuse. Um, so what we have working right now at 100% is the gaps, which is the RPS integration, you know, full uh, API integration. You can just purchase the phones, any Grandstream um, endpoint in the store, and you just, you know, give it an extension from the store, send an e API call. And what that does is it just redirects the, the device from um, Grandstream gaps to uh, SkySwitch NDP, which is the provisioning uh, server for SkySwitch. That's fully working and it's been working for a while. GDMS is something different. This is a different portal. This has nothing to do with the um, the redirection server, the RPS. This is a portal that allows you 
uh, you know, to have um, it's a single pane of glass and it allows you to uh, visualize all the endpoints that you have, you know, manage them, do some troubleshooting. You can even take a packet capture. That's something worth mentioning. And when you're doing your troubleshooting, instead of uh, requesting remote access from your uh, customer and then log into a, you know, a remote computer, you can just do that from GDMS. You click on start capture and then download it, which is amazing. This is separate from the RPS. We do not have the integration done yet, but we're in the phase of just gathering information such as, you know, mainly the API and see how we can uh, make the experience better for the reseller uh, from the store to add the devices directly, just like we're doing with the RPS, okay? I hope that answers Alex's question. Um, looking at the overall, we've, looking at the overall questions, I think we've covered everybody's questions. I'm surprised there are only four this morning. <laughs> oh, we get much more. That means you guys did an absolutely awesome job at preparing the presentation and being able to cover things so well in depth. I can't believe we don't have any open questions. We get all get five minutes back. And since to me, five minutes on a four day work week is like picking up an hour, I think we just wrap things up and say thank you to our friends from Grandstream. Thank you to Fareed, our superstar in support, who really backs up Corey. But you guys in the reseller community, if you don't know Fareed, get to know him. Shoot him an email. Give him a call. Get to talk to him. He's a whiz when it comes to making sure all your devices work. And when it comes to Grandstream, he has this great family relationship going back a few years from when he used to work there. So everybody, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for our questions. Thank you so much just for being SkySwitch resellers. You mean so much to us, and we hope that we're fulfilling our commitment to you about better education and ways to help you make more money, because the more money you make, the better we do. And last but not least, Erica Vasquez, thank you again for all your advanced work. Everybody on this call would not have sounded as smart or as attractive if you didn't give us the right advice to make sure the presentations go so well. So Erica, thank you, and thank you all for tuning in. I'm Andy Abramson. We'll hear you. We'll see you on the next SkySwitch webinar. Bye-bye. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, guys. Thanks.